Hey, what's up, y'all? Daquan here with DaquanBowens.com, here to help musicians take their playing to the next level. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Julia, and she's going to be showing you guys five tips for better piano technique. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you show her some love in the comments below. All right, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share, and all that good stuff. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, my name is Julia Omelko and I'm here today to share with you my five tips for improving your piano technique. My first tip for today is reducing shoulder and arm tension and just generally in the entire upper body. Now very often as pianists we think very much of playing with our fingers and the reality is is that we have a lot available to us in our shoulders and arms to help us improve our playing. One very easy warm-up that you can do to kind of get started with this and you can also just do this throughout your practice sessions uh, just keep checking in with yourself to see if you feel tense or tired um, just lift lift your arms and then just completely drop them and do that a couple of times feel that heavy weight just dropping all the way down and then you can practice eventually letting them drop on the piano on the keyboard and see what a loud sort of sound it creates when you just fully let that weight drop down now when you're playing instead of focusing on the fingers feel that weight helping you push down the keys i like to think of it as using the weight uh using that as your sort of primary um mechanism i guess um and then using your fingertips of course that round shape uh to sort of refine your sound because obviously you can't just be doing that either with flat fingers so just feel that weight sinking in you can imagine it sinking in through all the way to the floor sort of through your keyboard if you are turning your thumb a lot especially people starting out the arpeggios are a big culprit for this um, you are completely changing the angle of your arm now imagine we're playing a really fast scale or a really fast run you know it, we kind of have that effect a little bit and so what you want to imagine doing is rather than sort of twisting imagine that your forearm needs to stay sort of straight and the same angle the whole entire time and again use some of that arm weight and just imagine the energy going up and then coming back down now of course in an arpeggio this is going to be going up 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 down 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 of course in a run it might go a couple of different ways the idea is still the same so instead of going we are just focusing on the energy and weight going across going across going across staying straight coming back down coming back down something really important to think about is not only do scales and arpeggios really help improve your physical technique they are the building blocks of music and if you don't already understand that then understanding that will really help you learn music a lot quicker compose your own music if that's what you want to do um, and start just recognizing different patterns in your music now let's say you look at a piece of music and the key signature is in g major so you immediately know that the composer has used the notes from the G major scale to compose the piece. I like to think of the scales kind of as the palettes. Uh, so they've used the G major scale sort of as the palette to compose the piece. They've used it to compose the harmonies of the piece. And as you know your scales better and better, you'll start recognizing those patterns now what the rule of threes is is simply 
trying everything that you play at least three different times. So this could be something as simple as playing your scale staccato, playing them contrary motion, you know, so on. Or where it comes in also extremely useful, I found, is if you're arranging something or if you're coming up with a piano accompaniment, for example, uh, Make You Feel My Love, uh, Bob Dylan, I could play it like this, which is sort of how I typically play it. And so on. Now, I could also try adding a different type of accompaniment to the left hand. You know, maybe taking the right hand up an octave. Maybe doing something like... something more rhythmic and so on. I mean, you could obviously do a million different things with something like this, but this is extremely useful because especially as someone who has been classically trained, uh, it's very easy to fall into sort of one way of looking at things, one sort of style that you always play everything in, uh, one way of expression and just forcing yourself to think of everything in a few different ways, even if you explore options that you would never really use very much, is still very helpful to sort of open up your creative brain. And I highly recommend it no matter whether you're preparing a piano accompaniment, uh, using a fake book, or just playing classical music off the sheet. This can be extremely, extremely helpful. The fourth tip I have for you today is switching up the rhythm. If you are practicing any type of passage that is particularly difficult, I strongly recommend trying to switch up the rhythm. Now, this could be something uh, as simple as if we're trying to play. So instead of just, you know, we're playing 16th notes, we're getting a little bit frustrated with the unevenness of it, we can just do something like a dotted rhythm. Or anything like that. If you're struggling with octaves, maybe. Switching up the rhythm will help a lot with finger control, finger independence. So if you're struggling with something uh, like playing things evenly, playing things quickly, especially, I would strongly recommend switching up the rhythm in several different ways. Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Julia Omelko, and this has been my five tips for improving your piano technique.